and I would also argue that Minerva doesn't teach you properly how to code. Cool. Hello. 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 <laughs> Hello. I'm Kristen. This is my YouTube channel. And today, I have Hera. Introduce yourself, Hera, to the people. Hi, I am Gerardo. <laughs> I am a student of Computational Sciences. I just recently graduated from Minerva Schools in a degree in Computer Science. So, this is the final interview I am conducting about the Minerva Schools Colleges and we are doing Computational Sciences today. So, what was your concentration? I had a special concentration. I was originally doing the Data Science and Statistics, mm -hmm. but then I ended up uh, switching one of the courses and taking another one from a different concentration. Okay, which one did you switch? CS156 for CS152. Okay, cool. So AI instead of machine learning? Yes. Okay, so first, can you give us a brief overview of the core courses? So I did 110 and 112. So 110 is like your intro programming class, basically. Yes. Algorithms. CS111 is about the yeah. mathematics behind everything. Okay. CS112 is the main core course for the concentration, which is about different methodologies to analyze data. Professor Diamond is the one who gives the class, mm -hmm. and he invented or helped invent two of the algorithms or methods that we see in the class itself. Yeah. So that's very cool. Yeah. And so the data science intro class covers just a lot of basic methods for analyzing data, basically. Yes. <laughs> Let's talk about each of the concentration courses you did. So you did 146? I did. What happens in 146? So CS146 is about Bayesian uh, statistics. Mm -hmm. It's computational statistics in general. So the easiest way to describe it is what do you trust more? A product in Amazon that has five reviews and it has a 4.8 average star or something that has 4.6 but has 200 reviews. And so it's about the statistics, confidence intervals, what should we trust, why should we trust it more or less. And in general, in that example, it would actually be better to have something that has fewer stars but more reviews. more input, more reviews than something that has fewer but a higher score. Yeah, that makes sense. And so you actually have a reason for that as opposed to intuition. Yes. Because I think intuitively a lot of people would say the same thing. But yes, probability. Probability scares me, but it sounds really cool. <laughs> <laughs> What's an example of like an assignment you did in that class? Was it mostly like problem sets or? Yeah, so I remember we would have to solve some problems. Something I really liked about the class is that the professor would give us code and then we had to complete the code so we already had the functions we just had to put the code in there and make it make sure that it worked properly and so some of the assignments were just like that so what coding languages did you work with for that class python just python just python cool 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 okay let's move on to the next one let's do the data science actual row so then you did modeling uh, 166 yes. 166 so what happened in that class <laughs> so in that class we created classes and we would we learn how to use them to model different things so we modeled uh, cellular automata which is a very simple way to put a list of ones and zeros and mm. try and, and model things in real life like cars Wow. Yeah, and, and essentially there is a rule, so for every row, depending on the the neighbors, which would be like mm. the number exactly on top of you, the number on top of you and one to the left, and the number on top of you and one to the right, depending on those three numbers, there would be rules for what number should be in the row below it. And so we would find different patterns and we would be able to see how things interact with each other in one level of analysis and then in multiple levels of analysis which would be like on the bigger picture so what kind of like models did you do did they have names like they had very very uh complicated names okay <laughs> uh, i believe some of them like were russian and russian they they would be hyphen so i believe it would be like two or three people who developed the algorithm and then okay. i sort of remembers like the name or like the sound but honestly i don't want to say it because i would butcher <laughs> it very much fair enough fair enough very mathematical models what sort of assignments did you do for that 
like what did you specifically do for an assignment? May I talk about my final project, for instance? Yeah, that's um, okay. So in the final project for that class, I looked into all of the hospitals located in, in London. I mapped out the entirety of London. It's 50-something boroughs. And then I would uh, tell the, the model whether there is an hospital located over there or not. And then there would be these ambulances that would go and, and collect like hypothetical people in different neighborhoods. So it was all done also uh, considering Google Maps. So if the neighborhood next to yours doesn't have a, a hospital, then I created the algorithm so that the hospital that is closest to you would send an ambulance to you. That would mean that depending on the size of the neighborhood and how close it is or how much traffic there is from okay. one neighborhood to the next, how long it would take to pick you up, come back, and things like that. So I created the whole hospital system, the ambulance system, the creating fake patients, and I would model how long it would take to collect all these patients and whether we need another hospital mm -hmm. in an underserved neighborhood. That's really cool. Very applied, very relevant. So then you did AI instead of machine learning, so 152. Yes. So what did you do in 152? So in 152, it was about how uh, machine learns. So one of the cooler projects that we did was try and figure out how a robotic arm would learn to move given that it has different joints there are different parts that are moving with each other and then if you only move one of them then you can only move there are different yeah. degrees of freedom so you can only move like one joint like like this and then the other one like that and so you had to work together with all of them to create the whole robotic arm movement and then AI is a lot of like logic, right? It's lots of logic. Lots yes. of like formal logic, because that's how a computer thinks, right? Yes. Nice. So those were the only concentration courses you did, were those three? No, I took a fourth one, okay. which is CS 162. Okay. Uh, and that's software development. Software development, exactly. So it's about how to create software from scratch, find a problem, and then try to solve it by creating code that yeah. would help you. Cool. And then that one has a like group final project where the whole class builds something, to, right? Yes. Well, uh, so the class is divided into groups. In my course, I believe there were three or four groups. I was in a group where our final project was about the robotic arm that I mentioned in the previous course. And so the whole idea was that when you take that class, it is very difficult to understand sometimes because when you're reading, some people are more visual and they do not understand really how it's working because there are many mathematical formulas and algorithms that are working behind the scenes and it's difficult to understand it. So yeah. we wanted to create a real robotic arm that can be controlled remotely using this website. Mm -hmm. And so we built the whole website and the logic behind everything so that you could move the, the robotic arm remotely from anywhere in the world. So any Minerva student who is taking CS152 can go to our website and play with the robotic arm to understand how that whole system works. Yeah, that's cool. So that one's more of the like coding that people think of like building a website and like the front end and back end of a website. Yes, and we also had to deal with streaming and with coding the robotic arm. So there, there were multiple things happening all at once. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So then what tutorials did you do? So originally I was going to be double major in computer science and natural sciences. Mm. But since I took most of the classes for natural sciences, but I ended up backing out, I didn't have enough credits for the tutorials. So I made a deal with the, that extra concentration course that I took, software development, mm -hmm. would count as my tutorial. Would and replace so one? It, it would replace them, yeah. Both of them? Yeah, because I also ended up doing internships that counted as the tutorial. Okay, wow. You cannot do tutorials. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I did know that it was optional, but I wasn't sure how many people did it. Did you do an internship that was like coding or CS focused or? Yes, there was one internship where I did research, but I also built uh, this whole system where I would analyze the data behind on the back end and then try and bring all the results to the front end and, and give all mm. these beautiful data visualizations. Okay. And so that counted as one of my internships. For the tutorial? Or for the tutorial, yes. Cool, cool, cool. Would you like to share what your capstone was? Sure. Yes. Uh, so my capstone is 
I found this model where governments can implement these social measures where they combine six or seven different poverty reduction strategies mm. into one system. And so they're combining like giving someone an asset, giving someone money directly, training, giving them a bank account. And so there's many things going on mm-hmm. and the system works better than the, the sum of its parts. Yeah. And so it's very, very effective and efficient at reducing poverty long term. It has immediate effects, but also after the whole thing, which lasts about two years, between 12 and, and uh, 12 months and two years, the effects will last for many years after that. Mm -hmm. So it's something that you can do once and you will never have to help those people ever again because they will become financially independent in the future. And then the reason why governments want to do it is because the returns on investment Mm -hmm. are 500%. Wow. There is nothing, not even the stock market, that can compete with the amount of returns. And it's a very effective way of reducing poverty. So my whole capstone was about trying to analyze the data and trying to figure out why is the, this so effective and what we can do to extrapolate the effectiveness of this whole thing into other social programs so that they become more effective as well. Oh, okay. So like figuring out the mechanism itself that was making it have that outcome. Yes. Cool. And did you come to conclusions? Uh, no. It, okay. It was very, very difficult. <laughs> yeah. A uh, lot of capstones are like, I started to maybe see a little bit of what was going on. <laughs> yeah. So what happened is the data set was too large. It was about four gigabytes of data. It's a lot uh, of data. And there were about a hundred data sets that I found just for a specific study in Uganda. Mm-hmm. And it was almost impossible to analyze all of it yeah. in time for my capstone so I only did a small amount and I ended up pivoting my my capstone so that part of my contribution is also the cleaning of the data and not just the analyzing it that's pretty real cleaning the data it takes a lot longer than you think it will yeah (laughs) yeah I I learned that uh, it can take up to 80 or 90 percent of your time just cleaning the data and then the other 10 percent is actually yeah uh, understanding the data wow cool 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 I'm curious like to the extent you think you can compare, what do you think are like the pros and cons of studying CS at Minerva as opposed to a typical university program? So one of the nice things about computer science is that you can do it from anywhere in the world. But many people would like to go to the bigger universities, learn a bunch, like they would go very deep into the topics, but they would not have as much breadth. So if you're thinking of having a position other than just pure software engineering, Mm-hmm. I think it would be very beneficial to have all these other different perspectives, ideas, and even some entrepreneurship that we have at Minerva, where we have so many different connections, so many networks. It ends up being highly beneficial in the future, especially if you're planning on starting a, a company or doing something different than just applying to the fan companies. But would you say that maybe if you wanted to go super in-depth on something like AI, Minerva doesn't necessarily do that? Yeah. So Minerva doesn't go very deep into every single topic, but simultaneously I would argue that many of the other universities don't do it either. Okay. Because this is something so new that they're starting to develop all of these like books and tutorials and seminars and the syllabus is still something that you learned just last year may no longer be true anymore yeah next year so it's not it's something that has to be changing continuously and so it's more up to you to learn about all of these programs and systems that are being developed all of the time last question what do you think are like the big takeaways from studying CS at Minerva like what are you really going to carry with you moving forward from doing this program I think something very valuable about Minerva is the whole idea of complex system and issues that are very valuable when speaking about algorithms and the whole development of software and and problem solving because coding and computer science is just you have a problem and you're trying to find a solution yes so all of the problem solving skills that you learn at Minerva are things that you will not have learned otherwise or you may have learned them but maybe not at the the extent that Minerva ingrains them mm-hmm. within us. Yeah. So I think that's one of the main unique selling points yeah. for the Minerva curriculum 
compared to other universities. However, if you want to learn more in depth other topics, then Minerva may not be the best option. And I would also argue that Minerva doesn't teach you properly how to code. Mm. It's more of yes. you're learning, you're given problems and you have to solve them. And so you're just learning on the go yeah. as you're going, as you're solving the problems. It's helpful because you're being pushed out there to just code and just do it. Just do it. Which many people are, are afraid of coding. Yeah. But I believe that Minervans are not really afraid of coding because that's something that you have to do since first semester. Yeah, that is true that they don't like really teach you any of the languages though. I think that's pretty much it. Do you have anything else to say to the people? I think this is it. Thank cool. you very much for the yes, interview and thank let's you. subscribe for uh, to Kristen. <laughs> yes, subscribe to Kristen. Thank you. Thank you. Deuces. <laughs> <laughs>